Alrighty, everybody, welcome back. Today we are going to make a flyer. Actually, I'm going to make a couple flyers with you. So uh, stay focused with me. I would watch this video one time first. Just watch it. Don't try anything. Just try to get a, an idea of how everything looks. And then the second or third time, try to watch it and pause it and follow the steps. So it takes practice. Remember that. If you're frustrated, um, don't be frustrated. Just practice, explore, be brave, and absolutely ask me questions. I'm a real person. You can leave a question in the comments or message me directly, and I will be happy to answer your question. And if it's a great question, maybe I'll upload a video answering the question because I'm sure others will have the same question as you. Okay, so to make a flyer, the, you have to start by asking yourself, what's the purpose of my flyer? If it's uh, perhaps it's an invitation to a bake sale, or perhaps it's uh, for a missing cat. I hope none of you uh, have a missing cat or a missing dog. Uh, but uh, there are many reasons in life why we want to make a why we want might want to make a flyer. So let's start by opening up uh, Word, whether it's 2013, 2016, or any other version you may have. And this is our canvas. I'm going to call it our canvas, even though it's a sheet of paper, because I consider all the work that we do together to be works of art. So usually art is done on a canvas. Um, OK, so standard, your page comes with these margins, about an inch on all four sides, top, bottom, left, and right. We want to change that for a flyer. So we're going to go to Layout. We're going to go to Margins. And rather than normal, inch all around, we're going to go to Narrow, which is half an inch all around. Now I get to use more of the page. Since I'm not writing a formal letter, it's great to use as much of the page as possible. And Jenna wants to say hi. Hi. Come over here. Hi. Look at the camera over here if you're saying hi. Hi. All right. Can you guys see Jenna? OK. Thank you. So Jenna is also learning, and she's watching. And she's going to be in the next video, which is um, which is going to be a story time book, a uh, story time video. Uh, Adam wants to say hi. Come on over, Adam. Say hello. I want to do it today. Hello. All right. So we're all what we are going to do it today. So tune in for the story time video, where Jenna will read this book. Doctor Seuss. Um, we'll have to make sure that we don't uh, violate any kinds of. Uh, rules by reading a book and sharing a book online. Anyway, let's stay focused on our flyer. Um, we are going to also insert a border. So every flyer should have a border. It doesn't have to, but let's at least learn the skill of how to make a border, and then we can decide whether or not we want to use it. Go to Design up here, and then go to Page Border. And you have a few choices here. you got Box, Shadow, 3D, and Custom. I'm going to go to Box and just press OK just to show you. So that's a simple border. I'm going to go back to page border, and I can choose different patterns. You see that? I can even change the size if it's too small. Let me go back to the main border. Um, hmm. So you could usually change the thickness. You could change the color, too. Um, so now that's a red border. And let's there's the thickness. So let's go to make it a little thicker. So there's a page border. Um, you can also be creative. Microsoft Office does have some creative. Now they look kind of not perfect here, but if you choose them they look better. So check out the hearts. Um, you can also make them bigger. So here, I'm going to just type in the number 30. And press OK. Ooh, OK. So. Um, you want to keep the border relevant. This is just a taste preference. Now, if I'm, I'm going to do my first flyer example with you guys as a bake sale, so I'm going to choose cake as my border. There we go. Um, is it too big? No, I like it. It's good. So here's the other thing. Now, I could just start typing bake sale. Keep in mind it's behind the border, so I would actually have to go in front of it and press enter and tab and so on. But you know what I recommend uh, to the people I'm teaching, I recommend <coughs> going to insert and going to shapes and choosing this. That's text box. Now, I recommend this because you have more control over your text this way. So, bake sale. Now, instead of having to press enter or a tab, you can actually move the box around per pixel. So, you have full control. And that's really important when it comes to making 
art or making a flyer or doing anything in Word where it's not a formal letter or an essay. This is a sort of an art. So text boxes are great. And they're not uh, as limited as you might. You might be thinking, oh, look at this box. Well, guess what? You can remove the box. You can change the box color. You can change the background color of the text box. You can make it virtually invisible. So that's what I'm going to do. First, I'm going to highlight my text and center it. There, choose the center alignment. That way, whatever I type in there stays centered. And now I just want to center the box. Keep an eye on the space on both sides of your text box to make sure it's centered. And if you have a late enough version of Word, it kind of snaps. You see that green line? It's snapping to let you know that's the center. So use that. Okay, now to make my text bigger, I highlight the text. I don't have to erase it. I can just highlight it and keep enlarging it. Now I want the text to reach as far to the size as possible. So look, it looks like, you know, oh my god, too big. Okay, no, no problem. Just expand the box. Now you notice my mouse keeps disappearing. Um, not sure why it's doing that, but I will look into it momentarily. Okay, sorry about my voice. I'm fighting a bit of a congestion these couple days, so. Okay, there it is, bake sale, the right size I want. Leave a little spaces, you know. Now I want to get rid of the box. I don't want the box to appear. So I'm gonna go to, I click in the box, look, if I'm out here, if I put the cursor out here, um, <clears throat> then uh, I cannot really, I'm gonna keep the cursor there. Okay, if I put the cursor here, I can't change anything in the box. But when I click inside the box, I can go to Format, uh, Shape Fill. Now, that's the background color, so watch. See these? Now, white is different from No Fill. No Fill means if there's something behind it, you'll still be able to see it. It'll be like, it'll be as if it's on glass. Whereas, if I choose white, it's like it's on a white piece of paper. And you'll see why that matters later. For now, I'm going to choose No Fill. And um, Shape Outline, I will choose No Outline. Again, white matters. If I choose white, you won't be able to see it right now. But if other elements start adding up onto the page, which ultimately they do sometimes, maybe not on this, uh, maybe not on this task of making a flyer, but um, you'll see in uh, some of our other videos, uh, it definitely matters. I'm going to choose no outline, and look, it's still there, kind of just to guide you if you click in the box. But if you click off of it, completely invisible. At the same time, I still have that full control I was telling you about. So I don't have to press enter or tab to move the text large chunks at a time. I can be really precise. There you go. Bake sale. The rest from here is pretty much history. I just keep inserting text boxes for the date, for the place, for the time. And I definitely want to find a nice enticing picture off of Google Images. Now if you're using images off Google Images for commercial purposes, you're going to have to um, you're going to have to be careful and look up your local uh, copyright laws and make sure that you're not violating anyone's uh, rights or anyone, and you're not, make sure you're not stealing anyone's hard work. But um, otherwise, for learning purposes or for local bake sales for your school or for your organization, I think it should be okay. So I'm going to find something with a white background because something like this without a white background kind of is going to kind of stick out sorely on the page. Let me just show you what I mean. So I'm going to copy image. I'm going to right click here. Right click paste. Now, uh, always, now I can't move my image. Look, I'm trying to drag it. I'm very limited in the type of movement I can do. But watch this. When I click this, layout options, and I choose behind text or in front of text, watch this. See that? Now I can move it by pixel exactly where I want it. And to change the size, I can sort of just grab it from a corner. Now be careful, I see a lot of people, they do this, and that's distorted, and it looks a little strange. I recommend <laughs> resizing a picture always from the corner, so that you can maintain its proportions, and it doesn't look strange. Now like I was saying, a picture that does not have a white background kind of sticks out, and um, to me, I think in a negative way, I'll show you the difference. See this picture here, has a white background, and you'll just find that it looks better on a white backdrop. So I'm going to right click. Copy him. Now to get rid of this picture, I'm going to click it once and press backspace on my keyboard. Now I'm going to right click again and paste the new picture. That's this one. And already you can see, oh, I always have to hit layout options and choose the option that will let me 
Now here it's in front of text. If I click again on layout option to put behind text, now it's behind text. Oh, so that's what I was telling you. See how I can still see it behind the words? Now if I click in the text box and I go to format again and shape fill and I choose white, watch. Now you can see how there's a white panel behind my writing. Whereas if I go to uh, shape, whereas if I go to shape fill, no fill, now I can see. So it just depends what you want. This makes the words not clear. So I would always want some white panel there, unless for another reason I didn't. Um, we'll talk about that later, though, when we need it. Right now, this picture is actually not going to be behind the text. It's meant to be in the center. So again, I'm going to use my green snap line to center my image. So this is a awesome cake. Normally, I would choose something with a little more color. Again, with a white background, but more color. Um, Ooh, that's a little scary. I'm not going to use that, but that's scary. Okay, you got this one. This looks cool. But because the image is cut off on the bottom, it's going to look strange in my poster. I want a whole image. Like this looks nice. Too white, though. I want some contrast on my picture. This looks cool, but it's a birthday cake. So, bake sale, birthday. Mm. Um, this is like a more of a wedding cake. Anyway, I'm happy with the one I have so far. I could also use cookies, or I can use a variety of other Papa, things for my bake sale. Oh, you can use that turkey cake. Yeah, but we talked about the background, so we don't want to use this because of the background. We want, to want something with a white background. Um, in any case, let's move forward. We're going to insert um, shapes text box. Okay, now I'm going to make another text box, and I'm just going to write, um, for, don't forget to first center and enlarge your font and I'm just gonna write where um, well actually maybe I should write the date so we'll make a pretend date just for the sake of this flyer uh, look at the calendar and my calendar says we can do Friday March 16th Friday comma space March 16th 2018 okay is that big enough now, I don't want it super big like the bake sale. Just want it as because we're going to need some more space. Also, the bigger something is, the more eye catching and the more important. Um, huh. My cursor does keep disappearing. It's a little annoying. I'm going to have to figure out what's going on with that. I'm um, going to make it a little bigger. Ooh, that's good. Okay. Do I want the box? No. I'm going to click in the box again, format. Um, Hey, baby Jay. What you got there? Okay. Cool. Um, I'm going to get rid of the shape outline. No outline. Um, yeah, that that's good. Friday, March 16th. Now, I want two more pieces of information. That is the time and the location. So, if this is going to be um, in a school cafeteria, maybe, let's say. Um, I'll put that. And... Uh, and let's say the, the time will be from, I don't know, 11 a.m. until 2 p.m. Okay, so insert again, another text box. Now, you remember what I said. We want to keep using text boxes because we want to have that control. Um, so we'll just write cafeteria. Now, you can always write it and then change it after you write it. So there we go. And keep enlarging, enlarging, enlarging. Maybe even bolding it. Now watch this. So when I go like that, see I don't have that kind of flexibility. But if I master my tools, I go to format, shape fill, no fill. And shape outline, no outline. Will you look at that? There you go. Will you look at that? Okay, now I'm just going to move this up a little bit. Um, I'm also going to move the cafeteria, the word cafeteria up a little bit. make sure it's centered okay and now I can insert one more text box and um, and then I can put the time okay, I'm going to center this box and I'll put the time 11 a.m. till 2 p.m. okay I'm gonna center baby Jay what are you doing Okay, we will. We'll make a video for it, and we'll share. 
your reading with everyone. Okay, now I am going to remove the box and the color. No fill. No outline. There. And this is how you make a flyer. Now, if you want to print, you can go to File, Print, as long as your printer is set up, which mine is. I can hit Print. And I will go ahead just uh, and print this. I don't want to waste ink, um, but I think it's important for you to see the printed result. You know what? Okay, so if you hit print, you get the idea. You'll have a flyer. It'll be printed. It'll look awesome. And I'll forego that step. I think you have a good idea of what it will look like. If you have any questions, leave a, a message or a comment. Please leave a like if this was helpful for you at all or if you just want me to succeed and you want me to keep making more videos uh, and you want this to hopefully eventually be lucrative for me because right now I'm still starting out and there's no YouTube dollars involved um, but I believe together we can make it happen and I have a lot of knowledge and skills and tips and tricks to share with you not just in Microsoft Word but also in Photoshop uh, and uh, Premiere video editing StarCraft um, formatting and fixing your computer, you name it. Definitely leave comments and message me. Give me some guidance and direction of which way you want me to head because I have so many ideas and I'm just going to try to chip away at them little by little. Thank you very much for tuning in. It has been a pleasure to help you and work with you. Share your results with me, with your family, with your friends, and have fun. All right. Thank you. I'll just uh, close this. Mm. Are you still recording? I'm about to stop the video. And stop.